Hello, my fellow weeaboos, and welcome to another tier list. This time I will be ranking the Kung Fu Panda characters in terms of how powerful I think they are. Even though it was made in the West, Kung Fu Panda is set in the East, so it's a perfect series for a weeaboo like myself to scale. I've also gotten multiple requests to make a tier list on this series, a vast majority of them being from a single person. Daedric Young, this is a shout out to you and your persistence. You're finally getting your wish. I decided to make this list now, as a new Kung Fu Panda series just released on Netflix called The Dragon Knight. However, I won't actually be including that show or the other previous Kung Fu Panda shows into my list due to them not actually being a part of the main canon. For this list, I'll just be using the movies and the specials. If you want me to do a list with all of the show characters, get this video to a million views. Starting at the bottom of my list in the fodder tier is Master Wo Hop. He is a master of cooking rather than in Kung Fu, and after failing to even damage Po, he realized how weak he was and tried to commit suicide, but failed at even that. Zhang is the fodder messenger bird that got bullied by Vakir and Tai Lung. He's bigger than Wo Hop and can fly, so he can probably pick him up and drop him or something. The soothsayer is too big for Zhang to carry and can beat on him with her walking stick. She's also an acupuncture specialist and can predict the future, so maybe she can see what he's going to do and stab an important acupuncture point. If all else fails, she'll eat all his clothes and Zhang will fly away in embarrassment. Mr. Ping is a noodle god and may actually be the secret god tier of the verse, even being able to stop the zombie version of Master Shifu with a pan. Grandma Panda is slow, but she fights dirty, not afraid to go for the tenders and she was seen chasing and beating on one of the zombies in the final battle. Shen's wolf minions are standard fodder enemies. They're able to terrorize regular villagers, but any competent fighter can beat them. Commander Vakir and the Rhino Guards of Chorgam Prison are also your standard fodder, but they're bigger so I put them higher. Next up is the warrior tier. At the bottom is Big Fun. He trained his hug to the point he could crush logs, and he used this hug to trap zombie monkey and crane. His hug is powerful, but it's his only move, so if he doesn't catch his opponent by surprise, he's probably gonna lose. Li Shan is also physically powerful, being able to casually play catch with a giant metal ball. He's also a respectable warrior, being able to take out a couple of Shen's wolves. His major weakness is his limited stamina from his panda asthma. Shen's gorilla guards were clearly ranked higher than the standard wolves, and one was able to last longer than most opponents would against Tigris. Great Master Viper had Venom strong enough to fell 15 Gorilla Warriors, and a mid-sized Crocodile. He was able to defeat a bunch of bad dudes, attacking his village at the same time, and I don't see anyone below him having the skill to avoid his Venomous Bite. The Armored Gorilla Bandit found a way around his Venom by putting armor on. With his Venom countered, the Gorilla Bandit ended up defeating Great Master Viper, so he goes above him. The Gorilla Bandit ended up getting defeated by a young Viper whose only training was ribbon dancing, so anyone trained decently in Kung Fu should go above him. This is why I put Mei Ling one spot higher. She was the top student at the famous Li Da Kung Fu Academy and was able to easily defeat the other students. Her Kung Fu skills put her above the characters below. The leader of Shen's wolf army was able to go back and forth with Po for a bit and was strong enough to hurt Po when he wasn't fighting back. The power of his attack knocking Po over also knocked Tigris down as well, and he was able to get up with seemingly no real damage after a massive body slam from Po. These skills, strength, and durability feats are just significantly better than the characters below him. Next is the low master tier, and pecking his way to the bottom is the epitome of a low master, Master Chicken. In his zombie form he was knocked around by Poe like fodder, but in his regular form he was fast enough to keep up with Master Bear and Master Crocodile, and he was physically strong enough to easily hold up Master Bear with one wing. He also has blades attached to his wings and feet to help him turn his opponents into chicken feed. Master Bear didn't really do anything besides attack Poe in his zombie form for a second, only to be stopped by kids and firecrackers. He was also the first of the masters to run like an idiot straight to an opponent far stronger than himself, so his brash nature and lack of feats land him at the second lowest spot in the low master tier. The Master Badger twins in their zombie forms were able to hold their own against the Furious Five and Shifu for a bit, and are even more deadly working together, being able to pull off moves like their crushing double gong technique. Mei Mei was able to outskill both of them at once, so even though the zombies might have been nerfed in that fight due to how many people Kai had to focus on, I think taking them both on at once should scale her above them. 
She also showed she was incredibly strong when she plucked Poe's oversized bod off the ground and held him over her head. Master Porcupine uses his quills as arrows, and in one scene his jumpy version got the better of Shifu and Tigress. The Wu sisters were stated to be the most feared and notorious villains who ever terrorized China, and that together they were more powerful than any kung fu master. However, this spot represents each sister individually, and not together, so they should be below Master Thundering Rhino, Storming Ox, and Crocodile, since young versions of them defeated the Wu sisters when working together. But considering the Wu sisters apparently took on an entire jackal nation armed with only a pair of chopsticks, I think it's fair to say they would be at the top of this tier. Smashing his way into the bottom of the mid-master tier is... I am Boar! Boar was able to beat up a bunch of masters, and it was stated only Shifu could stop him. He was able to beat on a young tigress, and when she punched him, she was the one who was sent back. However, once she fully leaned into her own tigress style rather than trying to copy Shifu, she ended up sending him to Pound Town. Master Storming Ox and Master Croc are both around the same level, both back when they were younger and during the events of Kung Fu Panda 2. Storming Ox's specialty is his ability to analyze weaknesses, while Croc's specialty is his impenetrable hide. I put Croc higher as his zombie version was able to give Poe and Tiger some trouble. The next four members of the Furious Five are all roughly the same level, but I place them in order of who impressed me the most. Viper impressed me the least out of the Furious Five, with her main feats just being defeating a small number of fodder and giving Tai Lung a bit of trouble in a group fight. Monkey doesn't have many feats either, with his notable feats being kicking Tai Lung a couple of times and being able to deflect Master Porcupine's arrow. He also managed to hold on to Jombie Mantis until Kai recalled him back and stole his chi, so you could use that to argue him above Mantis. But I put Mantis higher, as in his Jombie form he was beating on Monkey and throwing him around while Monkey was holding on to him, and he just has way more feats showing off his strength. For example, he held onto the rope bridge all by himself while everyone was fighting on it, and even managed to give it a good whip, as well as kick Shen's massive weapon through the floor. He may be the smallest of the Furious Five, but I actually think that's an advantage, as his strength clearly isn't inferior, and his small size would just make him a harder target. I put Crane above Mantis, as he didn't rush in to fight Kai like an idiot, and actually managed to put up a bit of a fight against him. Kai said his chi was strong like Mantis's, but didn't mention the other masters. So that statement can be used as evidence for why Crane and Mantis would be above Master Croc. Crane also has the ability to fly and create massive gusts of wind that span a vast area. This would counter Mantis' small size, as Crane wouldn't have to accurately aim for his small body, and his lighter weight would make him more prone to blow away in the wind. His zombie version was able to fight against Tigress and overpower Viper, which is more evidence for him being the second strongest member of the five. Moving up to the high master tier, at the bottom of this tier I place Shen. He was able to fight Master Croc and Storming Ox at the same time and hold the advantage over them. He uses Deadly Blades, which he can use both in close quarters and for ranged attacks. And he could use these to even give Poe a run for his money. Master Thundering Rhino got the better of Shen, and Shen practically flat out admitted he couldn't win without his fireworks cannon. Crane thought it was impossible that Master Rhino was killed, and Tigress said his horn defense is impervious to any technique, which easily scales him to this tier. He also apparently slayed 10,000 serpents in the Valley of Woe. Tigress is without a doubt the strongest of the Furious Five, having the best performance against Tai Lung, even giving him some trouble at first. She arguably gets even stronger throughout the films, as in the second film Poe hurt himself just by punching her, and she was able to keep him from getting past her. You could even use those feats to argue she scales above Tai Lung, since Poe outfought Tai Lung and didn't hurt himself punching him like he did with Tigress. But Poe's body counters Tai Lung's nerve attack, while Tigress's body doesn't. And you can argue because Poe wasn't actually trying to fight or hurt Tigress, you can't scale her skill above Tai Lung's because of it. Tigress has another impressive feat where she clashed with Kai, pushing him back and creating a big shockwave. Kai beat Master Ugwe, who stomped Tai Lung, so this could be used as another argument to scale Tigress by the time of Kung Fu Panda 3 above Tai Lung. However, she had Shifu and two other members of the Furious Five there as support, so I don't think that's enough to solidly scale her higher. In the first film, Shifu was able to hold off all of the members of the Furious Five at once, and he did better against Kai and Tai Lung than any of them. It's also implied he knows the Wuxi finger hold. Tai Lung broke out of a prison with 1,000 armed rhino guards, bashing through all of them like the fodder they are. He single-handedly defeated the Furious Five and could blitz Monkey with his nerve attack. He defeated Shifu in their fight at the end of the first film, and even though Shifu was nerfed due to his feelings for Tai Lung, he admitted himself he could only hold him off. 
It's possible Shifu ended up surpassing Tai Lung in the later movies, as he mastered inner peace and started learning how to use Qi, but there's nothing definitive that proves this. You could possibly use how well he did against Kai as an argument, and how he could have done even better than he did against him if he didn't get distracted by Ugwe's stone, but I don't think that's definitive enough to put him above the guy that already convincingly defeated him. It's also worth noting that Tai Lung was stated to have gotten stronger since being in prison, which means all of the scaling off Ugwe and Kai becomes even less clear. So I think putting Tai Lung at the top of this tier is the safest option. Skidooshing himself into the bottom of the Grand Master tier is Poe. Wow, that sounded wrong. Poe may have started out as fodder that got his butt kicked by the Furious Five, but after his training from Shifu, he ended up being able to easily defeat Tai Lung. He got back up after Tai Lung's biggest attack, so pretty much nobody below him has the striking power to put him down. Shen with his bladed weapons that countered Poe's fat defense were a bit of a threat, but Poe showed he was superior to him as well. He has mastered the Wuxi Finger Hold, which can send mortals to the spirit realm. He could even use the move on himself to drag anyone he's holding into the spirit realm with him. Poe also mastered Inner Peace, which allowed him to deflect the blast from Shen's cannons that were powerful enough to kill Master Thundering Rhino. Master Ugwe is a true Grand Master, being over 500 years old and the creator of Kung Fu. He was able to stomp Tai Long with nerve attacks and he's a master of Qi, being able to shoot massive energy attacks, which is a big step up from Shifu only being able to make a flower bloom. He and Poe put up a similar fight against Kai, but Ugwe has vastly more experience and mastery over Chi, which is why I put him higher. Kai was originally defeated by Ugwe 500 years ago, but while in the spirit realm he was defeating and taking the Chi of all of the other masters, Tai Lung included. Whenever he takes someone's Chi, he becomes stronger and can create a zombie version of that person to fight for him. He could defeat Shifu, Tigress, Monkey, and Viper at the same time, and he defeated Ugwe and Poe relatively quickly. Honestly, the gap is enough to where you could arguably give him his own tier, but I didn't want to make another tier just for Kai. Why not? And how well Shifu and Tigress did against him leads me to believe a two tier gap between them would probably be a bit too much, so he goes at the top of the Grand Master tier. There is a character that deserves his own tier though, and that's Poe as the fully realized Dragon Warrior powered up by everyone's chi. In this form, he was easily defeating Kai and was basically just toying with him. He has so much power, when Kai tried to absorb it, he blew up. If that's not enough for a tear gap, I don't know what is. Now that's enough about the Dragon Warrior, let's talk about the Weeaboo Warrior. I create tier list videos like this and more on my channel, so if you want to master the art of power scaling, I recommend subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. If you liked the video, press the thumbs up button and share this video to as many people as possible. Don't forget to comment down below and tell me what you thought and who you would have ranked differently. See you guys at my next totally awesome video. Skidoosh.